Monday afternoon in Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. A huge security operation is about to begin. Soon a suburb will be surrounded and searched for weapons and drugs. The team is a mix of local police, UN advisors, and as something entirely new, a group of Indian police women in charge of security. We will strike a criminal hideout. It's a two houses. We finished the Ricky for the area yesterday. Uh, the targets, uh, actually, the target what we want to discover today is like before, weapon and uh, drugs. The role of four police units today is to give armed backup for LMP PSU. They are not armed. The Indian officers have been in Liberia since January. They're a very rare sight in a world where weapons are mostly used by men. But 20 years ago, India saw the need for a female police force, and today there are two battalions with 2,200 women. Most of our battalions, it remained deployed in uh, counterinsurgency areas like Jammu and Kashmir of India. So, you know, the, our organization is quite experienced in handling uh, such kind of situation. Females have a good understanding level. Whenever one man lose their temper, but one female never. So, when we were working for a peace process, the uh, thinking level of women is very helpful, as uh, I think so. <laughs> with 20 years of experience as a female battalion in India, with frequent and difficult operations in, for example, the troubled province of Kashmir, the women have great confidence and insight in the task ahead. In a post-conflict scenario, like here in Liberia, if you are having a female troops who are competent enough, who are trained enough, who are having all sorts of sophisticated equipments, I mean, you are bringing the, the female officers who are very competent, thorough, professional, and of course, they have, uh, by virtue of females, uh, they, I mean, it's, it's in their in, in inherent quality that they are very compassionate, they are caring. So, in order to implement all sorts of peacekeeping and humanitarian assistance programs, I think women are the best options. But there's another very important reason why the UN has sent in an entirely female unit in Liberia. For many years, the UN has had a big problem with UN personnel abusing women. And in Liberia, especially last year, 30 cases and the year before, 45 cases. And this, among other things, is where the Indian women will help make a change. In the old days, you know, the armies always had come followers. <laughs> and in fact, the factions who fought here abducted women, exploited women, etc. And it seems to be, it used to be the part of the military you know, process. So now what the UN needs to do and is doing very greatly is to make quite sure that the um, Everybody who comes is aware that it's wrong. There is zero tolerance on it from the Secretary General. And as I say, we've now got a, a conduct and discipline unit whose job is to make quite sure that people are aware that it is wrong and that uh, if they are caught in that process, they are dealt with quite severely. The abuse of women and children is one of the single biggest problems in Liberia. There's probably no other country where women are being abused in this scale. During the war, it was really quite bad. Uh, re some research that was done by WHO and IRC, which is the International Rescue Committee, uh, showed that 93.9% .9 of women who were in Liberia during the war were you know, sexually abused or abused generally, beating up and all sorts of things. And um, of that 96, they said they thought 73 percent of them were actually raped during the war. So you can imagine the high tolerance of violence against women was left behind after the war. So that it carried on. 
And also, don't forget that um, discriminatory attitudes feeds this problem of violence against women. The civil war ended three years ago when the UN sent in troops. But since then there's been little development and 14 years of war have created a very rough society. The 3.2 million inhabitants have experienced war at close hand and especially many women have paid a very high price. During the war, rape was a common weapon. Yes, to be very frank, it was very tough. It took us, it imposed a stigma on us as young women coming, you know, in, in the post Liberia the war of fighting. We found out that, you know, there were so many problems on rape, you no know, abusing of women. You know, it had a, a, a negative impact in our mind. So many fighting, shooting, killing their children, pregnant women, men and things. I was, you know, you know, uh, uh, embarrassed when the war was fighting. I was arrested, scraped naked, you know, because they said I was uh, part of the late President Doe. And so they scraped me naked, they carried me all the way to the seaside, you know, to fire me. But one of the commanders, you know, he looked at it and said, you release the lady. I can I left and he released me. So that was my experience. Post-conflict, you got everything has gone wrong. There's no system. There is uh, no system to respond to the situation. Uh, there's enormous poverty. And then you find uh, there is uh, old traditional attitudes, discriminatory practices that all fuel this uh, violence against women. So you get two. You got both the high tolerance of violence because of the war, and then you got the discriminatory and traditional attitudes all feeding into this. So you can imagine, even I, I won't be surprised to find that there are a lot more, there are a lot more reporting of violence against women. Even, well, I don't think so, even during the war, or maybe at the same level of violence against women. So this is, this is quite a problem. In Liberia, the Indian peacekeepers are part of a huge UN operation. The last three years, about 15,000 UN soldiers and police officers have tried to keep peace in a country that is so destroyed by war that almost nothing is working. The tensions are still lurking under the surface. Together with the government of Liberia, the UN is trying to get the women to take the lead to ensure the future of this fragile country. Whenever you want to educate a country, first we educate the girl child. And that's related to mother. And uh, being female, it's uh, very obvious that uh, you can uh, make people feel aware that uh, female are also required to be educated, required to be put on some field, required to be aware about the everything whichever is uh, happened in society. So it's a good sign whenever somebody will see to work uh, some female in some fields, it's naturally they will be encouraged, they will be inspired by them. In an attempt to educate both local police and other UN units, it is the women that bear arms in the capital Monrovia. Right now, foreign forces guarantee the peace in Liberia. The local units have to build from scratch, and through huge campaigns, the UN has tried to get the women to sign up. This is the Liberian Police Academy. It's 6 a.m., but the future police officers are already up and running.
They're busy, because Liberia is in great need of a new police force. During the war, it was the police that was responsible for many of the atrocities, and therefore they were sacked after the war. Everything had to be rebuilt from scratch, and it's been very difficult to get people to join up. Especially women have stayed away from this typically male-dominated job. It was not easy from, from the onset, even to the point of how to get recruits. It was not easy because uh, it, it appears the, the mentality of the, of the, uh, the citizens, uh, the, the police officers, uh, nothing. They don't respect them and therefore they are not willing to come. So we, at times we have to go begging them to come down. But it appears there is awareness now and they are coming down. We found out that there are so many web issues. As we get involved in the, the, the police force, it will be our primary duty to make sure that we tackle those issues and bring the perpetrators to justice. Let them pay for what they have done. Well, it is very much important because when we look at our past history in Liberia, we found out that female as a whole were very much venerable you know to the crimes you know rape and discrimination and today on me has come in to introduce a very good thing that women can be involved so that they can stand you know and you know erase those mentality that people have in the, in the past those traditions that women were less important while men were over important. So it is important that we form part of this unique organization. The UN wants 20% of the future police force to be female. And after the arrival of the Indian peacekeepers, things have started to move in the right direction. They've already had an impact in that we were, when we were trying to get women to join the police. Uh, it, was, it has been very, very hard to get the target. And when we introduce the special measures of getting women to be uh, coached so that they can take their high school diploma to enter the police academy, before the women came, we were targeted, before the women came, the Indian women came, there were about 112 women who had applied to go through this process. Within three weeks after the women arrived, in fact, less than three weeks, and there was a lot of publicity about it, the numbers raised to 360. So obviously, they've already, as role models, they've already had impact uh, on the women in Liberia. And so the women in Liberia are now saying, if they can be you know, police, I can be police as well. So they are now joining. So that's a, a huge impact. Well, I feel very much happy because if I can see my friends, female, you know, in the police who are coming to join us, to give her instruction, I feel very much happy to receive them and hear that they are here. The trainees live on campus for six months, during which they must get ready for their new job. And that's extremely difficult because everything must be learned from scratch. There is no basic understanding for civil rights and police methods. So then the officer have to listen actively to the complainant. Because of the problems with sex crimes, women are extremely important for the police. But so many things must be learned. The local police is not yet ready to take charge in Liberia. Today they operate without weapons, with two UN advisors by their side and two female Indian peacekeepers as security. We stop with this, direct with this. One year ago, Liberia was the first country in Africa to elect a female president. My administration should endeavor to give Liberian women prominence in all affairs of our country. We will empower Liberian women in all areas of our national life. And she has appointed a long line of women to very important posts. There are female ministers, and as a very important signal, the president appointed a woman to lead the police force. And even though development is slow, the chief of police is moving in the right direction. During the war, things went out of control. 
So now I know a little bit of that and know what went on during the war. And so I can compare and contrast knowing the abuses that our citizens went through during the war. I'm able to know how to be sensitive to the citizen of this country and at the same time to be able to talk and counsel my officers, the, the ones have come with goodwill for restructuring to accept certain level of insult because you know the citizens were hurt by certain police those days. So the, the confidence to build it was difficult. But so far it's been very well. The operation we followed was quite peaceful. Not a single shot was fired. In half an hour, more than 20 men were arrested. Most of them released immediately after. They were taken because they were in a house where drugs were found. But the kingpin was gone when the police arrived. It's uh, happened very quickly and uh, all my team members uh, have done the job very, very swiftly. And it was good. Oh, but check here. Women, we've got some special skills. The men have got also some special skills. Some of the skills can be trained in all of us. But, you know, as I said, um, women often have much better skills at negotiating skills. You know, men, you men tend to be a bit more macho. <laughs> and, you know, it's a bit more militar militaristic in a and an environment like a peacekeeping environment. When you have a bit more women, a few more women, it actually tones down the uh, militaristic attitude and it tones down the macho attitude. Our visit to the Indian camp is in many ways like a visit to any other military camp with barbed wire and armed guards, but nevertheless, the atmosphere is a bit different. <laughs> Please raise hands who all are married. Many of the women are mothers okay. and their thoughts are with their families. Keep yourself mentally and physically fit. And uh, don't uh, worry about your families, your kids, because they're all fine there. The Liberian police force are very well aware of the nature of what lies ahead when the UN moves on. But they look at the future with cheer and the women of Liberia are ready to fight for peace. There is a been a tremendous changes for better. I mean, even the men salute the females. The men are assisting us. We are being so strong. You know, I mean, normally we are being the brain behind husbands anyway. Uh, and now we are being the secretaries, the special assistants, the administrative assistants behind all these men that were running the country. Now is our time to take the front row.